Welcome back to the Balanced Light of Teletainment, the Good Morning Niger Show. Now, we've been mentioned earlier, say we get a very, very strong and cajad guest in the house. Uh, people go talk, say, no, be every day you go see the big masquerade when they come play for your compound. But the day when they come play, you go know it's in a festival and I don't start. So, now our guest today is a political economist and he's also a lawyer, of former United Nations official, uh, lawyer and former United Nations official. He's also a professor of, of uh, practice in international business and public public policy at uh, the Fletcher School of Law and Diplomacy. Uh, also, uh, in uh, the founder of the Sogat uh, Strategies LLC, uh, an emerging market risk, uh, risk strategy and macroeconomic advice, advisory firm, and the senior advisor of the official uh, monetary and financial institutions, institutions forum, OMFIF. Uh, he also, uh, he's also a contributory Educator, a contributory editor, I beg your pardon, of the Central Bank Journal in 2016. Uh, this is our cadet guest. Uh, he also found, he been found the Institute of Governance and Economic uh, Transformation, IGET. Uh, also, in a, uh, also a, a think tank. That IGET is a think tank that focused on the achievement of inclusive economic growth and effective public publicity, uh, public policy in developing countries. Amongst so many other things, we are guests don't do. Uh, not to mention the fact that he also a presidential aspirant come 2019. Central, former deputy governor. And also said. Uh, uh, yeah. Former, former deputy, deputy governor, governor of, of the yeah. Central Bank. So you still say portfolio large, well, well. <laughs> so when I say we get big masquerade in the house, this masquerade is very, very big. Uh, we would like all our viewers to so join us as we welcome uh, Mr. Kingsley uh, Chiedu Mogalu. Good morning, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Good to have you in the house. Now, Thank just, you. I, I, I will read them somewhere and say, apart from the fact, say, your name looks very Igbo, you have a Yoruba name too. Yes. How did uh, it come about? Uh, my name, my name, uh, my names. Uh, Kingsley, Bosa, Chiedu, Ayodele, Morgalo. Uh, I've been there, I've been born for Lagos. Yeah, they born me for Lagos. My uh, godmother, na Fela Mama. Oh. Yeah, Mrs. Fumilayo Ransom Kuti. Kuti. So, Nain gave me that name, Ayodele, when they born me for Lagos for 1963. In uh, that time, uh, many people there, they, they named people, some people, especially Igbo people, mm. they, tend to be very nationalistic. So you find many of them with names that are also not Igbo names. Mm. Yeah, so that's how it, that's how it happened. Okay. Very nice to know, say, um, yeah. the great um, um, Fumilayo Ramsokuti, in a person yes. way, actually give you that name. Now uh, let's talk about the women. Yes. I know, say, you in a press way, they actually come outside, they talk, say, women, we yes. need to participate in politics, we need yes. um, equality. Yeah. But a lot of people go disagree with you, say, uh -huh. women participate, participating in politics, say, we are not emotionally balanced to handle the affairs of the country. Who How are you going to debunk that, that particular statement? Uh, who talked that one? Uh, that one no be not a lie. Women, women suppose they inside politics. Women suppose they for government. Because they be human beings just like men. You, you know, if you'd say, oh, not only men go they go they run the affairs of, of the country, but women suppose they for kitchen or the other room, quote unquote. Ah, me, I don't like that one. No. Me, I feel say women suppose get the same equal opportunity as men for governance. Men and women know be the same thing. Mm. Me, I never see men where they're pregnant. Mm -hmm. I never see them. But equality of opportunity, now I'm at the talk. Mm. Uh -huh. And women also, it gets certain thing where women, they bring, where men no even get. For example, women, as I see them more, and from my experience, women, they manage money better than men. Women, now then they bring up our families. So it gets a type of, view, holistic view, when then they bring to things. They bring, then they bring emotional intelligence also to management and to leadership. So may I believe, say, women supposed to get opportunity. No questioning for my mind about that one. All right, sir. Yeah. Now, coming back to, uh, to uh, you know, how it takes that, reading out your portfolio, all the things where you don't achieve, the places where you don't be with the central bank before, mm -hmm. it'd be like, say, you get the experience, you get background in economics and, and uh, um, um, financial policies. Yes. So now, looking at all this, what not be inspire you to come out and say, um, now, 20, come 2019, we need to change certain things in the government, particularly leadership. What not you see, what not be push that um, inspiration out of you to say, I need to, I need to be here and uh, mobilize my own people. Yeah, the thing where cause them be the poverty. Mm. The poverty where they this country too much. 
And the reason why that poverty they be say our politicians be only politicians, they no be leaders. You get difference between politician and leader. The politicians not only them better than they look for. You don't see them now for recent times. See, say people just they cross carpet anyhow. No reason. They no tell them constituents so we elect them, say then they move from this party to that party. I lie. So now just them own the who the politicians, now them they get one like club. It be like society. Mm. And all of them are the same. Today, then they PDP. Tomorrow, then they APC. Next tomorrow, then come back to PDP. That's what they do I'm for civilized world. That one tell you, say, so, so the, now the thing will just make me vex. Say, people just, they get poorer and poorer for this country. Meanwhile, some, the politicians, just, they get richer and richer. How that for be? It's not supposed to be so. So, now I say, look, if I just be technocrat, maybe I take government appointment. Meanwhile, politician just stand down on top of me. If I bring good policy, if you know, if you know, fall into the politician vested interest, eh? that policy no fit work. The politician goes just scatter the thing. That's not the thing where they cause problem for this country because the politician knows sabi how to manage Nigeria economy. They know sabi how to create jobs for people when no get job. They know sabi how to create good hospitals for healthcare. They know sabi how to create good schools where we fit educate our children. Now, what be the reason now why we get government? If the government no fit do all these things, because not just politician, politician, just they play politics, but no leadership, no competence, no character, no capacity. Now I make a decide, say, the time don't reach way, I go offer myself to Nigerians and say, here, yeah, I get a certain vision. Way they different from the thing we done there before. I see you talking so much about leadership. Now, we don't follow you, and uh, we're still following a lot of people. And uh, for one recent interview, you talk, say, you are not out to rule Nigeria, but you are out to lead Nigeria. Yes. Now tell us, what will be the qualities of a good leader? And so far, you feel so we don't achieve at least once in, uh, in Nigeria history of the, that quality? Well, person will, will be a good leader. They get certain qualities. Make I tell you what in those qualities be. Number one, good leader and a person will get vision, long vision. Say, at this place with the travel, good leader no say to lead people now what they call a, a journey. It will not be just today, tomorrow. Eh? That leader supposed get they are supposed to be able to inspire Nigerians to lift up their spirit. It's supposed to be able to motivate people. It's supposed to be able to mobilize people. Say, now here we they go. Oh yeah, move. And Lele, let's be moving. You understand? Now those things be quality of leadership. Now, in Nigeria, the only thing where we they get now rulers. For them, the only thing where they say, I get power today. I get power. So I suppose I award you, I, I fit award contract. I fit uh, chop money from NMPC. I fit do this. I fit do that. Power, but no responsibility. Leadership, not responsibility. Power or authority. Now only one tool which you fit use, exercise your responsibility in, in a way that it will work for the people. Okay. Now, uh, maybe I quickly jump in you see, here. You see the difference? Mm. Uh -huh. All right. Now, still talking about leadership, uh, uh, and uh, of course, without, fo without leadership, without followership, there's no leadership. Of course. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Oibo will say it is lonely at the top. You know, when you get there, sometimes <laughs> you feel very lonely. Mm -hmm. Now, we yes. say being the president of the country is just a position for one person, but the presidency in a large office. Yes. Now, I would like to ask, being the fact, say, now you, you don't decide to take up, um, you know, politics as well, and yeah. to, to see how best you can be a leader to the people of Nigeria. Um, why, my question would be, say, why you not consider um, starting from mm -hmm. you know, a lower position, say mm -hmm. possibly the governor of your mm -hmm. state, mm -hmm. or going to the National Assembly with mm -hmm. your cohorts, like-minded uh, mm -hmm. people, to change policies there mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. eventually getting to the top? OK. The reason be say, one, the vision where I get for Nigeria, and a vision for the whole of Nigeria, mm -hmm. no be vision for somebody the way just there in my village, or a person way just there for a white bomb. I get a vision for the whole country. And the only level where you fit where, where you fit affect the country with that vision, not the president, not the office of the president, because the presidential system with their own. That's number one. Number two, if you look my experience well, well, as you yourself don't talk, <laughs> I know be small boy. Yo. Hey, me, me, I don't see, I don't exercise leadership at world level. Yeah. I did for United Nations for 17 years. I start from entry level, reach the highest rank for, for United Nations. Before I come retire, before I don't reach 45 years, 
Then, they, then President Yaradua and Governor Sanusi now bring me back to Nigeria, Sanusi Lamido Sanusi, for 2009. Say, make I become Deputy Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. For five years, me I manage Nigerian economy, financial sector, and me be the Ogade. You understand? Mm. Me, I don't be professor for one of the world's most prestigious universities. So I know fit to recite my credentials or my qualifications here. That kind of experience, na presidential level leadership experience, it be. You know, be leadership to be counselor. You know, be experience to become counselor. So, na true say, I never be Nigerian politician. But what Nigerian politicians don't do for you? Not only your money that they chop, and only tribalism than they do for Nigeria. The only, you know, so if, if to say the track record of Nigerian politicians, not good track record, hey, then you go say to me, why you know one comes start from A, B, C? But now wait till their track record. So the fact say man, no, no suppose, no join them, they steal government money, it, it, no qualification it be. For now, my own eye. Let's talk about qualifications. Now, yes. a lot of Nigerians now, I, I see a lot of Nigerians trying to get involved in, in politics and yes. also how the affairs they, they run for inside yeah. Wobodo, Nigeria. Now, they don't go from just telling us that Nigeria never gets good leader. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have done this and I've done that. I get this quali qualification. So how you don't impact your immediate community uh -huh. positively. Yes. And also you come from Anambra State. Yes. Now, how do the people of Anambra don't actually feel your presence? Uh -huh. Maybe I tell you that one. 13 years ago, we established the Isaac Morgan Foundation. I established it while I was still there for United Nations. And with that foundation, we don't put more than 100 people for scholarships, education, access to education, girls, boys. So we don't, we don't train women, not, not be just for Anambra, for Nasarawa State, for Abuja, for Anambra. Uh, we don't help, we don't touch the lives of hundreds of Nigerians. So that one, my own community service, and I don't they do them for over 10 years. No, besides, they do them because of politics. Well, the time where I begin to do them, me, I don't get any idea. Say, I go go into politics for Nigeria. So, that, that one, number one. Number two, as deputy governor of the central bank, me and colleagues, we bring out police, uh, policies. We affect lives of so many people. Whether not POSO, where they use. Whether not your BVNO. Whether not to stabilize uh, our banks after the global financial crisis. I don't do them. That one affects people for an number. It also affects people for the 36 states of the Federation. So now they tell you, say, hey, uh, it gets some people where they don't get certain type of experience. We now supposed to come to be our leaders for Nigeria. The people where they there, they know submit the job. That one don't they very clear. They know if you manage the economy. Um, so make people where submit how to manage the economy come. Make we create jobs. 20 million Nigerians, no jobs. Uh -uh. All right. All right. Now, looking into your book, uh, Build, Innovate, and Grow, yes. and they get different aspects of the book where, where I've been done go through. Now, they get the part where you talk about nation building, where really interests me. Where Which is your are. mantra. Uh, and uh, you've been also, in that part of nation building, you've been, you've been uh, pinpoint certain things concerning the youth. Now, when also Nigeria, based on uh, demographics, uh, Nigeria and a country where over 60% of our population are below the ages of 35, yeah. you know, which supposed means, say, we supposed to be a working economy, a working mm -hmm. society. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we lack employment, um, mm -hmm. lack job opportunities, mm -hmm. and so many things. So we would like to make you also intimate us on how you intend to use the power of the youth yes. to your own advantage when yeah. it comes 2019. Good, very good. No, the, the, when I become president next mm. year, the thing where we go do be say we go to establish vocational skills training uh, centers for all the 774 local government areas of Nigeria, where youth go train, get skill, whether or not to be vulcanizer, whether or not to be IT staff, whether or not to be mechanic, whether or not to be electrician. All the world today is a world of skills. Meanwhile, our government no fit create skills for our youth. Mm. So when our youth don't get these skills, now say they go be better employed or employable. Yeah? Good. Then from the other side, we go come, we go set up one trillion Naira venture capital fund. This venture capital fund go to give uh, investment, equity, no be loan, they go give youth. Then go put money, help them start new business. All these youth will no get job. They go, the venture capital fund go help them start business, but they go own that business together with the people. So they go to share the profit. 
So maybe you, the business, you get 60%, the venture capital fund get 40%. But if you run that business well, after some years, you feel buy out the venture capital fund. Now, now you yourself don't own the business complete. So this is now a way to bring down unemployment because person will not get job, come start new business. If that business begin to do well, in go employ two, three, four people for that business. People also will not get job before. So you see, if you do them for across hundreds of thousands or millions, you see the economy will just begin to change, begin to improve. This is not economic sense. The people when, when they go, when they rule you now, they no get them. They no fit do them. Now you they run under the Young Progressive Party. YPP. Uh, YPP. Yeah. A lot of people they come outside talk say how you hope to defeat the giants, ADC yeah. and PDP. Well, the giants election. don't they defeat themselves already now. You, so, so then they do the job for me. <laughs> that, that's what I see. Them. And me, I just they laugh. And they laugh for English, they laugh for Pigeon, they laugh for Igbo, they laugh for French. Because when you watch Nigeria's politicians and what they're doing, you can see that there is nothing going on. People for this country don't begin to see, say, this system where we they run, you know the work. We get to do something new, something different, something bold. That na Kingsley Memorial presidency. YPP presidency, Young Progressive Party. So now that side where they go, because PDP, 20 years, no the work. APC, four or five years, you know work. So now waiting now, we get to try something new. You will not fit go they do the same thing. Every time they do the same thing, things say different results go come. No, we don't do them for 20 years now. We don't see results. No result. So we me say, me I believe say we supposed to retire all these old recycled politicians. 2019, I beg, make we send them go back to their village. All right. Now we don't talk about um, you know, uh, different policies. We also don't talk about uh, trying to empower the youth, basically. Yes. Um, we know a lot of youths, a lot of young people don't try to empower themselves by creating their own jobs for themselves, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. But one big challenge where many people get, many youths and young people get, now um, providing power for themselves, especially mm -hmm. the way they try to open their own businesses. Mm -hmm. For example, we know, say, and this is by simple analogy, saying um, if the, the likes of the barbers, the hairdressers, the welders, mm -hmm. if they get constant, constant power supply, mm -hmm. their cost of production mm -hmm. will reduce. Go, go reduce, Definitely. yes. Yeah. But now we don't see for donkey years, billions of dollars mm -hmm. spent in power sector. Yes. What will be your own, what, what will be your own solution? Oh, solution to power. To power. That one a very important problem. First thing we will go do, we say, it gets certain type of trucks where they provide temporary power. General Electric get them. Mm -hmm. they, it, this thing's there for abroad. But they no one bring them, help us here. Me, I go bring them when I become president. We go use them first of all, stabilize power. That's one and number one. Number two, we go move the Kainji Dam power and gas power. We go move them to support industrial areas like Kanu, Lagos, Aba, Onishane, we, those types of places. Then we go begin to bring in uh, solar energy, renewable energy. We go create market for renewable energy for Nigeria. Now, be the way to go. The world today is going renewables. All these uh, very big power plants, they take years to construct. So if you follow that path, you have to create another path. Renewable energy, plenty sun there in Nigeria, plenty wind there in Nigeria, plenty, there are so many ways to create electricity. Because when I become president, the economy and innovation will go take runner. Science and technology, get people where you get idea how to give us 24-7 electricity. But nobody go allow them because the politicians, they look for where to chop bribe. And that brings me to my next question. Now, a lot of leaders that we even get now, we get the same objective as regards to our light um, mm -hmm. power sector. Mm -hmm. Say, I will do this and I will do that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, they're not fit one. Uh, and that's the it. major problem now, corruption. Uh -huh. How do you hope to... Fight Call corruption. corruption for inside Wobodo, Nigeria. Yes, no, let me tell you what we'll do concerning corruption. Eh? To fight corruption, nobody today talk, talk, they shout, they make noise, they fight corruption. No. To fight corruption, you get to do three things, at least. Number one, you get to use, you get to create transparency. Processes for government, like budget, like procurement, they supposed to be transparent. You're supposed to see the thing where they happen for real time. That ain't be number one. So every budget we are going to submit as president, before I submit the budget to National Assembly, we go do what they call forensic audit. That ain't be say they no fit pad the budget. Budget padding. That one, you no go see them. 
because we will subject the budget to a forensic audit. If we see budget pardon anywhere, we remove it, and then we go after that department that has done the budget pardon. Number two, um, I, uh, recruitment, procurement. Everything, every contract, when they award, we go get database. We go show the prices of everything. That database go there electronic. Any contract proposal, they go submit them through that database. So if, if, if the cost of Bob, now 10 naira, meanwhile, for your own quotation, you now talk, say, the price of electric bulb, now 100 naira. Ah, now we don't catch you now. So the thing now, automatic electronic process. Now, in this, now how to fight corruption? Not be to come, they pursue uh, people where no day your political party. Meanwhile, the corruption inside your own political party, you're not looking at it. So number two, be say, as I don't talk, you get to be impartial when you fight corruption. You know, suppose they favor one side or the other. Corruption na corruption, whether na APCO or na PDPO or na YPP. Do you understand? So when I become president, the fight against corruption goes start inside my own government. Anybody where they corrupt inside my government, I go use and show example to Nigerians before I even begin to pursue people when they my my party. So na, na, na so people go get confidence. Say the fight against corruption. <laughs> we don't come now. So me, I get some very clear ideas about how to fight corruption. It's not by making noise, you see? And then we get to begin to address the issue of the value system in this country. Waiting, our children believe. Our young people now, they don't they grow up for society where now to get money, to get motor, get a car, get house, they show off. Now it be the thing where they aspire to. As I they grow up, me, I'd like to, now be, now be the reason why I'm a professor today. Because the day people where they admire, I say, when I grow up, I go be like them. Now I make a work for United Nations. Yeah, I've been mean, getting serious types of, you know, uh, values where I've been they pursue. Today for Nigeria, now Yahoo, Yahoo boys. And that's not right. So when I become president, we go introduce the teaching of ethics for primary and secondary schools. We go begin to tell our young children, say, this one will be the right way to do things. This one not the wrong way. This is the way to go. Conflict of interest, corruption, all those things. We go begin to educate our young people. Now, now they say, now how we go get new generation of Nigerians we know they think the way we are our politicians, they think now. All right. Now, talking, we don't talk about the fight against corruption. We're on a strong battle with the country still they fight. Mm. Right, let's move to another battle where we they fight now. And we talk about insurgency. Yes, Now, we Security. don't say, basically, um, Oga Presidu, uh, Muhammad Buhari, being a retired general, mm. uh, everybody mm. believes he uh, go put a complete end uh, <laughs> to security and uh, insecurity and insurgency in the country. Yeah. Um, but if uh, an ex-general no fit completely. According to your own words, we don't technically defeat Boko Haram. But now, we they look for not just technical defeats, but a physical and conclusive defeat. Um, what is your strategy towards insurgency and insecurity? Well, first of all, we don't see, say, as the Yubo people, they talk, the hood does not make the monk. The fact, say, you be general, no means, say, you're they competent to fight, secu to ensure security. So you go fit, see, for 2019, say, one certain professor will sit with you here go do a better job than a retired general. Now, the strategy be say, number one, we go bring professionals to head our security team. Number two, our security team will look at security, not just from point of view of Boko Haram, because uh, Oga Buhari Presido come in, uh, fighting Boko Haram. Meanwhile, headsmen, headsmen don't become even more important than Boko Haram. Then don't kill more people now. Uh, so, so number three, we get to secure Nigeria's borders. Our border with Cameroon, with Chad, with Niger, with uh, uh, Benin Republic. All these borders just they pour us. People just they come in, they go out. No be so sub countries supposed they. So number number five, we go get political will to fight security insurgency or headsmen or you get to something where they call political will. You suppose get them as a leader. But many of these uh, headsmen, they don't keep people so safe for Nigeria. Nobody, nothing don't happen now. We never see any one of them go to prison. We never see, even sometimes self, they go come out and say, now we kill these people, and we kill them because, and the law enforcement go, they watch them for television. No fit go arrest all these Mieti Allah people. Why? Mm. That won't tell you, say, political will, no day. If you don't get political will, you know if you do nothing. Thank you so much, um, King Slichedu, Ayodele Mugalu, 2019 presidential aspirant. And very nice conversation we don't get with you this morning. Follow him on top of Instagram, he did there, and you're going to see some of the things where they put on top of social media. Thank you very much. Thank you. Again. Thank you very much. Yeah. To enjoy more of this, our will go get videos when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page.
you go love her. 